All right, Travis Wingood Cell. I guess we'll do the video despite the minimal interest. I, Travis Wayne Goodsell, am a better prophet than the LDS prophets, and Mormons aren't going to even bother to listen to this video. <coughs> and that is one of the reasons why I'm a better prophet than the LDS prophets. Because if Mormons are so scared, so paranoid, to hear truth and call it fallacy or false instead, yeah, they've been deceived. Uh, so you'll have to watch the the Battle of the Prophets video I did to get an understanding of what a true prophet is. And I, I already see that there are Mormons who disagree that a true prophet is not any of that. That's Mormons for you. They don't bother to listen. That's their major problem. <clears throat> they don't listen to their own prophets. They don't listen to any prophet. <laughs> Let alone somebody trying to save their lives. And that's one of the issues. So. <clears throat> uh, prophets, according to section 121, tell the truth. They're transparent. They don't cover things up. They don't lie. They don't deceive. They don't cheat. The church has come out in the Gospel Topics essays confessing that that's exactly what they've been doing. Coming out with new variations of church history over and over and over and over again. They can't get church history correct. They're not even bothering to search for real church history. <coughs> so that's the church's side. My side. I did the research on church history. I'm Mormon, born and raised. Still had to do church history. I didn't just believe what is being told to me in, in the LDS church history. And as a result, I found out the real church history and have been doing videos informing you of it. I've also published a book on it, but you have to pay for that, so this is free. This is all public domain. Any of you can obtain a free copy if you know the source of which to obtain a free copy of my video from I don't care, I'm not concerned. YouTube cares, YouTube is concerned, screw them. This is public domain. <coughs> The Book of Mormon is the keystone of Mormonism, not the prophet. The prophet cannot violate the Book of Mormon in doctrine, in principle, in precept. They have to follow it. They've chosen not to. They've instead been following the great and abominable church the rich Zoramites, the Antichrists, the Gadianton robbers, you know, that secret combination <coughs> of the song that I was introduced to the, earlier in the week or uh, some time ago by the Greek singer. And so what have I been doing as Nelson has uh, taken away the high priest group. You know, in Alma, uh, is it 12 or 13? I always mix the two around. Uh, but it talks about a high priest, how you obtain high priesthood, the high priesthood, the high priest office, by righteousness. Not by nepotism, not by being best buds, uh, not by being of age, not taking it away. It's by righteousness, not by being in a position of authority. <coughs> Nelson took it away. There's yet another example. Nelson presented an idol god to Mormons, putting a statue of the Gospels Jesus, which is not our God, in the first place, on top of the church, built 
on the church. The Mormon God built on the church. Uh, priestcraft. They get paid. I don't get paid for any of this. I preach freely. Public domain. And Irene and its infamous paycheck. And notice also what I do in regards to the Book of Mormon is I use the Book of Mormon and the words of Joseph Smith as my standard of judgment against the church and against Mormons. Thus I can go to the passage about priestcraft and point out how the church has failed. <clears throat> as prophets, they're supposed to heal the sick, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Oh, well, they got the Deseret Industries, they've got the Bishop Storehouses. What more do you want, Travis? Yeah, and what's the percentage that I've been going over from their announcements of the vast amount of money compared to what we, as mere peons, make? Yeah, point zero, zero, zeros percent. The church is filthy rich, just like the great and abominable church. The church has poor, which means they're not taking care of the welfare of Zion. They expect Zion to take care of itself. That is a violation of the Book of Mormon. It's not complicated. Uh, prophets are supposed to warn in advance of danger. Amos 3.7 Oops, it's the latter days. This is the time of danger. The signs in the heavens. Oops, silent. Disaster has come. Joseph Smith's prophecy prediction of a threat to America has happened. Where was the church? Complicit. MAGA, complicit specifically. They never called out MAGA, never called out Trump by name. You must call it out by name. You can't just generally say, oh, we're opposed to violence. You have to call it out by name. What have I been doing? Yeah, been calling it out by name and the church for their complicity, for their silence, silent complicity. And I've been warning you in advance. So not only am I calling out the church for their uh, not being prophets, I have instead been warning you instead, instead, instead. <coughs> I've been warning you about the signs in the heavens and what they mean. Warning you of the meaning that is coming. And they all came and no one listened. True prophets are not listened to. <laughs> False prophets are listened to. church is well known and constantly speaks out their racism, their sexism, their bigotry, and other hatreds. What part of the main commandment of love do they fit in? They don't. That's hate, not love. You cannot be a church that espouses racism, denying priesthood to blacks. You can't be sexist, suppressing women's voices, 
suppressing the priesthood from women. Joseph Smith gave it to him 17 March 1842. Brigham Young took it away. You can't be a true prophet if you don't allow humans their right to choose their life, liberty, and property. You can't go around telling people how to live their lives. You can't go around forcing people into the highest degree of the celestial kingdom or else get the hell out. You can't go to the state of California and tamper with the election of Prop 8. You can't go to Colorado as a friend of the court and claim to tamper with the decision of that court. You can't tell Mormons to vote against gay marriage in the state of Utah and around the nation. That is not love, that is hate. Let people worship how, where, when they may. Don't force people to be Mormon. If they choose not to be Mormon, don't hunt them down and have them tortured and murdered and assassinated and destroyed. And yet, ex-Mormons. How have Mormons treated ex-Mormons? Again, that's hate, not love. What have I been doing? I've been following the example of Elijah and the priests of Baal. I hope I remembered to say it in the beginning. <laughs> I probably didn't. It was on my mind. Elijah decides to confront the priests of Baal in battle, and thus this. <clears throat> to see who can have the altar burned by God. <laughs> the priests of Baal got to go first and they did their prayers, they did their chants, they did their dancing, they did their flailing and their repentance, the real repentance if you've seen Da Vinci Code, the guy who keeps whipping and torturing himself that's repentance. Yeah, that's an incorrect translation. We'll get to that But uh, I, the priests of Baal failed. Elijah asked them, hey, do we need to give you more time? Is your God taking a piss? Not in our translation. You have to go to the Hebrew. <laughs> and uh, I, Elijah then, obviously, drenched the altar in water and still got it to be ignited. A special kind of water, I guess. And the priests of Baal were exposed as fakes and frauds. <coughs> and so, uh, my voice has been one of warning. My voice has used the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith's revelations, words, speeches to as the judgment. I don't judge you by me. I had to deal with a Mormon on John DeLynn's video of which I got censored by John DeLynn in the end. No love from him. He obviously is a fraud. Nonetheless, a Mormon attacked me and said, by what authority, by what source, by what standard do you use to judge the church and Spencer W. Kimball as evil? And I told him, the Constitution and the Book of Mormon. He didn't like that I used the Constitution, didn't mention the Book of Mormon. <coughs> And uh, John DeLynn would not accept that either, I guess. And deleted the whole thing. 
and so during this coronavirus I've been warning you stay home stay safe don't allow them to extort you to go to work to get money to go out into public it's kind of tough I know but they're the ones to blame I'm the one trying to save your life I'm the one who's tried to heal you by preventative measures so that you don't get sick I'm the one who condemned the church for not at being prepared with bishop storehouses at least in the state of Utah to take care of people during this time so that we wouldn't have to go to work the church just didn't care to prepare they blame us if we're not prepared and so what the hell is the bishop storehouses for if they're not even going to use them for what their intended purpose is and then Deseret Industries they still have you pay unless you get a, a bishop to say okay yeah they're paying their tithing they can have free clothing they've been working they can have free clothing but in that situation you can afford to pay for your own clothing right? they don't want you to get free stuff they don't understand how to design what the Book of Mormon says is a non-monetary system of economy I'm the one who's telling you how an economy can work without money I'm not in a position of power or authority to do anything like that but I've given you my plan And so, even though the authority has been taken from me by the evil of the world, the evil of the church, I still have a plan, and I presented it for you. <coughs> now, there's these things called prophet, seer, revelator, translator. And I went over in the battle thing about a prophet what constitutes a prophet what he is supposed to do and I went over the comparison just now from those and uh, and so I'm obviously doing better as a prophet than the LDS church prophets I don't think there's debate on that they haven't even brought game <laughs> seer now that's something that has to do with past present and future being able to see the big picture as uh, Samuel the book of Samuel talks to us about a prophet used to be called a seer but somehow seers were taken away and prophets were put in their place huh. but that would mean that King David is prior not after but you know, won't get into that that's the, the author of the book who is uh, doing an anachronism for us and uh, a seer is able to get history correct and thus explain the future from the present the church has lied and covered up church history they're now throwing Joseph under the bus for many things not being a translator, being polygamist, when the church had been telling us he is a translator, he isn't a polygamist. Now all of a sudden they're changing? 
they've either lied to us before or they're lying to us now. They're definitely lying to us now, even if they've lied to us in the past and are now telling us the truth, because we can't trust them now. They've confessed that they've lied. We can't trust them. They're not seers. <clears throat> I, however, I'm a seer. I did the research on church history. I did the research on ancient history. I figured out that the Book of Mormon is coded. I figured out Joseph Smith's 1838 version of canonized church history coded. He didn't see Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ because that's not possible. No man can see the face of God unless he goes through the temple and gets the washings and anointings to pass through the veil into the presence of God to thus see him face to face. Joseph didn't do that. Joseph wasn't told not to join any Christian church because he joined the Methodist church, or tried to. They kicked him out because he's a glass looker. And his whole family had to leave Harmony, Pennsylvania to go to Susquehanna. See, again, Joseph gets that wrong. He calls it Harmony, Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. Oops. Code. <clears throat> he's trying to distract from the real Harmony, which is right smack in the middle between Sidney Rigdon and the farm. Sidney Rigdon is known as the author of the Book of Mormon. And so Joseph Smith, with Martin Harris, was to distract Martin Harris. And Joseph Smith blew it with the death of his child, trying to go to the Methodists, getting kicked out of harmony, and having Martin Harris destroy the 116 pages. He still had the originals, but they can't use them anymore because Martin Harris is on to them. And so, yeah, they go over that in sections 3 and 10. And so they had to redesign the 116 pages. Use a different book as a template. That's why it was written so fast. But that's why Oliver Cowdery stepped in and Joseph Smith is out in yonder pasture in Susquehanna. Not Harmony anymore. <coughs> Only a seer <laughs> can actually identify real church history and tell the truth, not lie and deceive and cover up. Revelator. I've did the video. I was looking for a certain passage from a reference in the Journal of, uh, not Journal of Discourses, the Discourses of Brigham Young. And in the course of looking for it, it was the wrong reference. <laughs> but, what did my wondering eyes did appear as I was live on the video? But I found that Brigham Young believed in astrology not astronomy. He said astrology was being a revelator. Well, he's wrong. <laughs> astronomy, however, is being a revelator. And uh, I have planned, I put it on a little notepad, we'll see if I get to it, uh, about Joseph Smith and his meeting with Moroni. about how uh, that's all code but uh, when Joseph Smith goes and gets the plates it's under a sign in the heavens and not just any sign in the heavens a specific one that's very close but a couple of planets well yeah a couple of planets are out of position but very close. And that's why it's code. 
they were telling us. That's why the Book of Mormon has Revelation signs in it as well. Signs in the heavens. And I've been revealing to you the signs in the heavens. Prophets, silent. Even on the one where Monson died and Nelson took over. That was a sign in the heavens. Revelation 12 about the stars in the heaven falling from the tail of the dragon. Yeah, Monson died during that quadranted meteor shower in the tail of Draco the Dragon constellation as Mars was now taking over the judgment of the church at the top of the scales of judgment Libra <coughs> and uh, during a month period of lunar eclipse I had already identified Faust dying in close proximity to a lunar eclipse that Hinckley and so then we have the three who die in the tetrad in 2014-2015 even Mormons were scared on that one oh crap is this it is this the, s the second coming is this it is this the start of it church said no I said yes So yes, deaths of Mormon prophets and blood-red moons correspond with each other when they relate to a scriptural prophecy. That's what what's part of being a revelator is all about. Church denies having revelation, even though they claim it as a title. I, however, have been revealing to you the stars in the heavens and their meanings and the events that correspond on the earth. Translator. Church will never claim translator. Go back to any conference you want where they hold the sustaining vote which is not supported anywhere in scripture. <coughs> translator is gone. They call it Revelator instead. Gospel Topics Essays confirms that reasoning. They say Joseph Smith never claimed to be a translator. Yeah, no, he did. But they go on to explain that Joseph received revelation as part of the gift and power of God. they will not allow Joseph to be a translator and they themselves are clueless about how to translate anyway they have no key of translator anyway Nelson gets up botches Israel it's defined right there in Genesis Yah Prince of God Jacob, which in Hebrew is usurper, usurped his brother Esau's birthright and blessing. And so as a result, God said, okay, we will call you Israel, Yah, Prince of God, because Yah, Prince of God of the latter days, will come through you, not Esau, because you usurped his birthright and blessing. Simple. Nelson botched it. He's not a translator. He even went to Hebrew scholars for his botched information. Confessing he's not a translator. I, however, just gave you the translation of Israel but I've also informed you 
and have been supplying you with clues. I have publications for the the alphabet script, how to decipher it. <coughs> That's my number one publisher on Amazon, despite Amazon shutting down my royalties. I can't even find my own name when I type it in as an author, let alone any book. <laughs> Their whole search program is all screwed up because of the analytical program behind it. But nonetheless, yeah, I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. And as a decipher of Paleo-Hebrew, I've been telling you about how the vocabulary works. Hadn't gotten to that in the sort of last days end of the world thing started. Needing to tell you about the signs in the heavens. So I didn't get to the vocabulary to publish that. But I've been giving you clues in videos talking about determinatives, talking about uh, suffix determinatives, uh, for example, uh, uh, Salem, uh, Solomon. It has the word Salem for peace, but it has an N at the end. That refers, as a human, to a king. If it were a place, it would be kingdom. And so Solomon is the king of peace. Yeah, Isaiah says something about that, doesn't he? About the last days, Messiah, from the lineage of King David, as was Solomon. Not a coincidence. Which then suggests that the whole David-Solomon thing is fiction also. Prophetic fiction for the Latter-day Messiah. <clears throat> I've also gone over how I have deciphered Egyptian picture glyphs. Gardner's grammar even Budge's grammar, which has more characters than Gardner's, they don't cover many of the picture glyphs characters because they're too focused on text. Jean Champollion deciphered the Rosetta Stone's Egyptian, which is the learning of the Greeks, language of the Egyptians. But it's just the text. No Egyptologist has ever conceived of the idea of translating the picture glyphs. So they don't put those characters in their sign lists. I deciphered Egyptian picture glyphs. As a result, Joseph Smith is also right. He was right about Hebrew in the King Follett Discourse, saying that the Hebrew text of the Bible is translated incorrectly and gave us a clue as to how it should be translated. My decipherment of Paleo-Hebrew confirmed Joseph is a translator, and I've been able to show a translation in Paleo-Hebrew, <coughs> exposing that the Babylonian influences are anachronisms uh, and as a decipherer of Egyptian picture glyphs I've been able to show how the Bible stories come from the translations of the picture glyphs and have shown Joseph Smith is a translator of Egyptian too as he translated what he did get uh, translated in Abraham because he didn't finish he got it from the picture glyphs not from the text I know that alphabet and grammar was an attempt by others it was by the scribes who were trying to do it they were trying to figure out how Joseph Smith was doing it he says right in the text in chapter 1 
refer to the facsimile. The picture at the beginning of the text. He doesn't translate it. He doesn't translate text. He translates the picture glyphs. And so, yes, I've completed the translation of the picture glyphs. So, prophets, the LDS prophets, have failed to demonstrate being prophets, seers, revelators, and translators. And I've shown you that I have been prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. So here's the big one. I've lost the majority of my audience by now. The key of Moses that Joseph receives in the Kirtland Temple, along with the key of Elijah, that is the first presidency keys. Joseph Smith even says so himself. I guess I should have had this on the screen for you. Office Moses. All right, section 107, where succession is in 22, verse 22, but here in verse 91. Again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses. The key of Moses is for the gathering. What gathering? The latter day gathering. Moses, Exodus, coronavirus of Egypt. You you may go. Exodus. Promised land. Moses. That gathering. The latter day gathering. Not Joseph Smith. He was assassinated. Church fell into apostasy because there was no proper succession in verse 22. There was no big priesthood meeting where a vote, not a sustaining vote, was to be held to determine who was to lead the church. Brigham and Sidney gave a debate and then people went to where they went. Brigham Young cheated and extorted women you know, hey, if you get sealed to me, Eber, one of my twelve, or even Joseph Smith, we'll take care of you in the Salt Lake Valley Desert in Mexico Territory. Yeah, people were extorted to be kidnapped in order to be taken care of. And so, what does the church claim as their key to this preside over the whole church? Is it Moses from the Kirtland Temple? No. Remember the whole Vatican Temple? Where they're uh, taking pictures at the statues of the Twelve Apostles of the Gospels? And Nelson is there holding the keys of Peter smiling yeah I fooled you all this is my authority yeah that's not leadership of the church that is the key of Moses I just read it to you in verse 91 of section 107 Moses is the key of presidency not Peter James and John you can't claim presidency if you're claiming the, only the keys of Peter, James, and John, which is the key of the ministry to preach, not authority to run the church. They don't claim the key of Moses, do they? If you ask them, they may condemn you and say, well, if you have to ask, then you're evil. 
you're not reading, pondering, and praying and getting a testimony. But some may say, of course we do. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Move along. No, they don't. And because proper succession was not done, the church fell into apostasy, you can't just claim the keys. The keys can only be given now in one manner. And that one manner is set forth in the Torah. In the book of Numbers, chapter 12. Now Miriam and Aaron, the siblings of Moses, were a little judgmental. They weren't happy with his Ethiopian wife, not Jethro's daughter, whom he married as well. <coughs> and so they thought that they could speak as leaders of the church. And so in verse 6, the Lord himself speaks to Miriam and to Aaron. And he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, and before time was seer, this was before time, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. Oh, yeah, Joseph Smith had that first vision, didn't he? It wasn't a face-to-face -face thing, it was a dream, as coded. So, has Nelson claimed that he had a dream in which Heavenly Father gave him the keys of Moses? No. He talked about a dream where he felt the spirits of two little girls that he wasn't able to save as a medical doctor. I won't mock him for the, that story. I will mock him for his lack of doctrinal understanding and mock him for his using that to uh, deceive the... my goodness, yeah, wow. <coughs> deceive the parents to trick them into joining the church. But uh, he never says that God gave him the keys. He assumed it by being the president of the Quorum of the Twelve, which was a change that Brigham Young made to his new kingdom. As Mormons, we grew up believing that the administration is as Joseph Smith had set it up for, and it's not. But nonetheless, what about me? Here's the big one. I published books on prophecy dreams. One such prophecy dream involved me being in the outer hallway of an arena, an indoor arena, uh, similar to the basketball courts for BYU devotionals, uh, at least at Rick's. It was a, held in the basketball court. They just put chairs over the top of the court and then seating was used to hear the speakers for devotionals. That type of an arena. I didn't go in. I was about to. I had two tickets. It was only me. <laughs> but I had two tickets to go to this arena performance that others were in black tie. And then all of a sudden, President Hinckley and his wife, Marjorie, appear before me. And they say, we don't have tickets to this event. May we have yours. And I gave them mine. And then Hinckley gave me the key card for his office. keys of the office. Back then, I still was wondering if 
the church was true or at least the church was true but is it possible that the leaders may have a level of unrighteousness that it just needs to be fixed in that regard but in the dream I was given the keys of the presidency of the church symbolically not literally it was not Hinckley who gave them to me literally just as it wasn't Jesus Christ in the first vision I have also had a dream in which I saw Jesus on a cross crucified the whole land was dark and there were literally hundreds of men on crosses as the camera of my mind zoomed in to Jesus on the cross I have also had a dream in which I was living out of a tent and I find a pair of boots and I go running to find President Monson President Monson was the president of the church still the one about Hinckley Monson had taken over Hinckley was dead I went to Monson and I said these belong to you he just turned smiled walked on I was left with the boots the boots of authority given by Hinckley had another dream in which I was in the Salt Lake Temple's Holy of Holies never seen the inside didn't know what it looked like didn't know that there was the first vision painting in there but there I was seeing the altar seeing the painting and then Jesus Christ appears in all his glory and we have a conversation in a dream sometime later I remembered that decided to check on Google pictures to see if I can find if there's anything the church has put out about what the Holy of Holies looks like oh my god exactly as my dream Nelson no me yes I skunked them he didn't have game in this battle I skunked them on all things being a leader of the church of being a prophet even and who am I I'm nobody YouTube refuses to let people see me as much as I do I average if I'm lucky 50 views per video yes I do have those breakouts but they're rare I've got over 2,000 videos and less less than six or is it six exactly I think it's six exactly who have reached a thousand views six out of 2,000 yeah YouTube shutting me down they're censoring me this is why the church tries to murder me they know they're frauds and here I am showing them up I came to them in 1998 with my paleo Hebrew decipherment and they secretly labeled me as a troublemaker 
They tried to get me excommunicated. That failed. I've done work for the church, not just for their businesses at their distribution center warehouse in 17th and 17th, but with the footnoting scripture program for the 2009 edition, for the foreign language editions. I tried to make some changes, they refused, but I've had a direct impact in your lives because of how the church has responded to me. Because of 1998, they then had to figure out how to get it to you, which then put, was put in the Gospel Topic Essay, Translation and Historicity of the Book of Abraham, that Joseph Smith is not a translator, as I've said since 1998 that he's just a revelator, which is supposed to be astronomy, though Brigham Young called it astrology. I never understood why astrono astrology was not the study of the astros, the astros, and astronomy was the study of the astros. Oh well. Um, I guess it's because astrologists <laughs> took over the name before astronomers could be called astronomers. I don't know. But, uh, uh, yeah, in the dream with President Hinckley, I actually went into his office, got to see it, put a little thank you on a post-it note, left it on his desk. That was during a time where I was indefinitely incarcerated, just like the prophets, specifically Abinadi, indefinitely incarcerated for a crime I never committed. I guess petitioning for a redress of grievances is a crime in Utah, especially when it's against the church. And here I am again suing them, just as Moses sued Pharaoh in his court. Let my people go. Here I am again. And so, I've skunked Nelson. I've skunked Monson, Hinckley, Kimball, Hunter, Benson. All of them. None of them have put out a performance just me and it's only because I believed in the church believed in Joseph Smith and I followed the process did the research produced the fruit Joseph is good the church is not good they've been lying about him deceiving and covering up. They have no authority. It's been amened a long time ago with the death of Joseph Smith. You can't have him murdered and claim you've got authority. Doesn't work that way. It was amen from the very moment he ordered his assassination. So there you go put the good stuff at the end and another hour long video so I've got to go running I guess <laughs>